Hi guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about German blue rams. These are some really cool fish that I think should be in every aquarium. Okay guys, so yes, let's start. Well, where do we start? Well, German blue rams. So German blue rams is this, well, little, well, kind of little fish. Uh, they get up to around about, well, it, it depends to be honest, but, you know, around like five, six, seven centimeters can go up to 10 centimeters in some instances especially the males will get a bit bigger but we'll get to that in a little bit but yeah german blue rams a lot of people would know them they've also got some different well you know rams uh there's all different names for them really but yeah we i'm just going to use german blue rams the short way to pronounce it is gbrs so i might use that a bit throughout the video as well but yeah so they this little fish or well little like i said they're not little but they are small but not big, but I don't know if you get what I mean. Anyway, let's start with some care requirements for these guys. Let's start with tank size then, because uh, tank size, I would say at least an 80 liter, which is at least like about a 20 gallon, you know, preferably a bit bigger. But something like a 20 to 30 gallon tank will be fine for that. And what you wanna do is just, you know, get the tank, get it all set up right, with filters, heaters and everything. Um, and then you can, you know, set it up in the way you want pretty much. If you wanna do a bit more biotypey style, they are from South America. So, you know, a bit tanned water could be cool. But yeah, in general then, once you've got the tank set up, you wanna keep these guys in, or you wanna keep them in pairs. Never keep them on their own. They don't wanna be on their own. Keep them in pairs or little groups can work too. It honestly doesn't really matter too much. So yeah, you know, about a t 80 liter tank, get a pair of them in there. You can have other fish with them. You can, they're pretty peaceful with most fish. Um, you know, tetras, corys, bottom dwellers, all kinds of stuff you can keep with them. But the reason why I said in the beginning of the video, uh, why I think this fish should be in every aquarium is because they are really, well, they are kind of peaceful fish and they are also like these, um, eye catcher fish, you know, so you know in a normal aquarium you would have maybe some tetras, some corys, some other stuff and there's mul normally multiple of them and then you want like some kind of show piece like eye catcher and you can have different, there's different types of fish for that, but I think German blue rams are really good, um, yeah, a good one for that purpose. Because it's really easy just to get a pair of them. Um, the pair you can put in the tank with all the other fish and they'll do really good in there. And they're just, you know, an amazing little addition to every aquarium, in my opinion. Now the thing is, you don't only have German blue rams, you've also got some golden rams, you've got electric blue rams, you've got all different color varieties, also like dark night rams and stuff like that, which is really cool. Um, care requirements are pretty much the same for all of them. It can differ a little bit but pretty much it's all the same. Right, let's go over some water parameters then. So, you know, the pH, they want, you know, a bit more acidic. So around six to seven will be fine for them. But honestly, they're not too fussy about it anymore nowadays. Um, you can keep them in pretty much any water. And then, you know, all your other parameters you want good, you know, like nitrites, nit uh, nitrites, nitrates, you know, ammonia. You don't want any ammonia, of course, and no nitrites. You can have some nitrates, of course, but uh, yeah, just keep an eye on those. But as for temperature, they do like to be really warm. Like they, they, they like to be on a hot, tem te hot temperature. And I recommend at least 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, which is in Fahrenheit around 84 degrees Fahrenheit. 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit will be good for them. Because I've just noticed if you keep them on, you know, cooler temperatures, they don't do as well. So they want to be really nice and warm. So I think we've pretty much been over, you know, or everything you need to know about keeping them, I would say. Oh, another good point is food, of course. They'll just eat your usual flake foods. Um, also pellets, you know, pellets they'll eat, frozen foods they'll like, you know, brine shrimp, also baby brine shrimp they'll like actually. But I would just stay away from like bloodworms and stuff like that because dwarf cichlids have a bit of a problem with bloodworms and stuff. Yeah, just keep away from it. Um, you can do it if you want. Uh, some people have, have had good experiences, some people have had bad experiences, it just depends. But yeah, I would say just brine shrimp is good for them. All right, so I think we've now pretty much gone over everything you need to know, like how to care for them. Let's now get on to some breeding because I've actually got a pair myself that I got and well, my goal was to breed them. The funny thing is within the first week of having them, they actually already laid eggs for me. So these are egg layers, of course, and you want to keep a pair of them. And now this pair will go find like a spot to lay eggs. They do like a bit 
sheltered spot and stuff like that. You can also keep plants with them, of course. And my pair decided to lay some eggs on a big Anubius leaf, which was actually pretty strange because it wasn't covered at all. It was out in the open. So I found it peculiar why they chose there. But, you know, fish stay fish and they get their own choice. So, yeah, anyway, what you want is, you know, a good pair, condition them well with... Uh, good quality foods, you know, baby brine shrimp, frozen brine shrimp, stuff like that. Then put them, you know, in the tank, you know, you want them separate, no other fish with them, to be honest. You could have some dither fish with them if you wanted to. Uh, for those who don't know what dither fish are, they're basically just an extra, like a different type of fish that you put in, like a tetra that swims around to let, uh, like the, the rams know that there's no danger and they can be out in the open without having to look out for predators and stuff like that. Because in the wild, the fish, like if there wouldn't be any fish out in the open, that would be like um, a point of like, oh, maybe there's danger or like big fish to eat you and stuff. And then they'll keep like in their little spots and not out in the open. But with a dither fish, they will go out. And that's actually a pretty good tip for anybody who is struggling with fish that are hiding and stuff. Just add some dither fish in and you'll see a difference. Anyway, so the pair you put in, they lay eggs, um, they'll just yeah, like I said, choose a spot to lay eggs. Those eggs will hatch in two to three days, depending on the water temperature and all kinds of parameters. Then those eggs will, once they've hatched, they'll take another five to seven days, in my opinion, um, to uh, form into uh, free swimmers because once they hatch, they'll be wigglers. So let me explain that again. So the eggs are laid two to three days later, they are wigglers. And then five to seven days later, they'll be free swimmers. Now, only at the point where they're free swimmers, you want to start feeding them. So yeah, once they're free swimming, you can feed them. And you can feed them, you know, baby brine shrimp and stuff like that. Also, tiny flake foods will do well. And yeah, just then, you know, you want to grow them up. Um, yeah, pretty much just, you know, grow them up as you would with any fish. Once they add like a sellable size, which is, you know, a couple of centimeters, um, you can start selling them, giving them away or do whatever you want with them. Do note that if you're gonna breed these guys, they can lay about 100 to 100, to 100 to 200 eggs a time. So you could be expecting quite a few babies. So be prepared for that. You know, you need space to grow these fish out. But that's the same with like, you know, breeding any type of fish, to be honest. So yeah, definitely, you know, make sure of that and everything. But other than that, you should be totally fine. So and there you have it. Basically, you know, I've been over the care requirements and the breeding um, and yeah, but pretty much everything like that. Now I'm gonna leave a video over here, which will be a video full on breeding these guys. If the video isn't out, because I need to see with like the timings, but if it isn't out yet, um, the video will be here later and whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.